So now that we're through the warm up, and uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, <laughs> you didn't see the warm up, so you're going to have to go to uh, Facebook, you, you, the you, Liberty you. Principal page. We're going to officially begin the show. Hold on, let me get to that. We're officially beginning the show now, Lou. This is the official beginning of the show. This is his daily Thursday with Lou Sandra and Paul Gordon of iState.tv. And Lou, you have something for us right out of the gate. Some oh, this uh, is cool. This is cool. I'm, I'm I'm looking at the comments here. I got my second laptop going, and uh, uh, this uh, who's okay. Sherry says I want to climb Lou's beard. Well, that was first. Andrew response. says, "Yeah." Andrew says, "You don't climb Lou's beard. Lou's beard climbs you." <laughs> <laughs> I can I can attest to that. I've I've been in a, I've been alone in a small room with Lou for a prolonged period of time. <laughs> and uh, I can attest to but, that. But, but so can Bodie, for that matter. Bodie and your daughter were there, too. That's right. So there was beard climbing everywhere. It was it was creepy. It was crazy. The, it, was, it, was, it was off the chain. The beard wasn't that long and bushy at the time. I can't wait to put this thing in dreadlocks. Oh, my. You're going to do that? You're going to dread it? How you it? doing, man? Everything will be all right, man. Oh, <laughs> I thought you were going to do like the, the, what is it, the gun website, Sky? What's his name? Oh man, I can't remember his name. Video, he does uh, YouTube videos for gun websites, and he's got like you know a torchlight touch in his hand, real, and he's got like two braids coming down, like on either side of his beard, hanging down. You know what I'm talking about? That would be a great no. look for you. So it's two braids on either side that just dangled down. No, and the beard itself. No, not the hair. The beard. No, I, I, I'm gonna braid the hair into the beard. Do you eat your also. hair? Do you eat your hair? No, no. I, I can afford food. I'm not on food stamps anymore. <laughs> no, I've never, I've not never, after I've last never, week. Not I've after them. Food stamps. Not after the uh, Coke uh, brothers checks came in. After the memes, uh, I think you hit some. Uh, you you hit a couple meme home runs lately. You had the I, I th the gas I one. The I thought the Koch brothers' money was really good until the Monsanto check came in. Cha-ching! Boo, dude. I'm with you yeah. there, man. Monsanto, shill it. You know it. Yeah. They, they paid me in Bitcoin instead of going cha-ching. It made R2-D2 sounds. <laughs> so we're going to get to our first segment. We're going to get to... So the way we do this show is we have the shorter leash, the longer leash, and off the leash... So we're going to do shorter leash here, here. Lou cannot hear the bump. So you folks in the comments section, you're going to have to relate to Lou what the, what the bump sounds like for this segment. And here we go. Our course of association shortening the leash on their pets. We cover stories of the state, the government, the coercive enterprise, the coercive association, plotting to or succeeding in shortening the leash on those they presume to rule. Welcome to a shorter leash. I'm holding up the phone to look at the comments and Lou is asking if I'm taking selfies. And this is kind of weird, Bodie. Bodie's always self-deprecating. Bodie, Andrew Marich, he is the co-host on Tuesday's show. I uh, is Daily Tuesday. Great show, of course. Uh, and he made the comment, this is my favorite show of the week. <laughs> Thank you, Bodie. That's awful I, kind of you. I think it's not because of me. <laughs> I don't. Since so, I'm probably not the deciding factor in that comment. So what what does the bump sound like anyway? Is it like bump, 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 no, bump, it's, bump, it's, bump, it's, bump, 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 bump. Uh, it's it's a little voiceover with some music, and the music's actually Frogs Are Alive is the music on that particular bump, and Frogs Are Alive is a one man band, which is me. I am Frogs Are Alive, what? so Frogs Are Alive. That's the name okay. of the band. Frogs Are Alive. Are, are, but are your frogs gay? They could be. I don't ask that question. It's a don't ask, don't tell policy within Frogs Are Alive. You just show up and write the music and go your way. I don't. I don't really care. So we're going to get to our first story. And yes, I, let's. I, <laughs> what do you mean by that? <laughs> You're like, oh, we're finally going to get to a story. <laughs> Look, so, I, I, I can crack jokes about anything. Uh, let's, let's crack jokes about a story now. Okay, let's do that. Alabama <laughs> forces you to pay the state to use solar power. That's my title. 
So their title uh, from Green Tech Media is, in Alabama, you could pay the utility $9,000 for having solar on your roof. I'm going to read my commentary. You can interrupt me and interject your commentary while I'm reading. Al I, Go ahead. I, haven't, I haven't read your commentary yet. I predict that we are going to agree, but you are going to be a little bit too mellow for my taste. So I'll have to come in there and kick it up a notch. <laughs> that's what I. That's what I can't. You're, you're you're the Tabasco sauce. I'm the. Okay. No. 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 You're you're the ghost pepper. I'm the Tabasco sauce. That's <laughs> that's what it is. Because I'm 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 a little out there. So Alabama is a state that doesn't like solar. And by state, I mean the owners and managers and their allies that directly benefit from the course of association nature of the Alabama course of enterprise. And apparently the course of enterprise of Alabama determined if you want to become self-reliant and say, go off grid. See, that's our last segment off the leash. We're not there. We're definitely not there right now. It's going to cost you. You will have to pay the government $9,000 or more for the privilege the crown granted privilege of using solar panels to power your home. Go ahead. Go ahead, Ghost Pepper. So that's nine thousand for the licensing fees and permits and all that other stuff. It it's uh, for a five kilowatt system that equates to twenty five dollars a month, three hundred dollars a year, and nine thousand dollars over an installation's possible thirty year lifetime. Now, if you have something more, you're going to pay more. So at least you don't have to pay it all at once. That's cool. So if you had uh, at the current national average price per watt of 292, a five kilowatt system cost 14,000 and that fee adds more than 50% to the original cost. Hmm. And the you you're paying a tax to use your own electricity. Just take that in folks. Yeah. So uh, uh, w what this really means is that the government owns the sun and well, in yeah. order to con in, in order to conserve these scarce resources and keep the tragedy of the commons where uh, people go and <laughs> and use up all the sun with their solar panels and they don't leave enough sunshine for everybody else. You have to pay this big, giant, massive fee to the government. Uh, most likely this has been initiated and provoked and prodded along by i don't know let's say the utility companies. companies that would that would be losing the business yeah but it's capitalism dude we live in a capitalist society that can't be possible free That'd be free weird. market free market i had somebody talking about i forget i was on our show yesterday with Niz. Hi, spike spike is here spike, is just, showed, spike, yeah, spike just showed up sup spike yeah. and, a, oh. and amanda and 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 Amanda Amanda Baker, hi Amanda. Andrews says this is in response to me being the Tabasco sauce to your ghost pepper. He said I'm the mayonnaise. I don't. I. Yeah. I whew. <laughs> but you 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 painted a really really scary picture in my head, and that is what if the sun becomes the tragedy of the commons. What if what people happens? use up all the sun with their solar panels? That's true. I mean, just, right? There's not enough for it. I, it. It's bad enough we have to share it with people around the world, and, and it, it gets dark at nighttime. So right. I, I, obviously there's not enough sun to be light all day long. So we all, we all, we, 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 we not we. just the mouse in my pocket, but right. we. The collective way that we were. Born yes. into and by our birth, agreed to we, be part of. Under we, the social contract, right. we, we under the social contract are all in this together, and we have to share the sun. It has to go over to Europe, you know, after we get done with it, and well, actually, it goes to Asia and and then Europe. But we all have to share this, and if we if we go putting solar panels on our houses, we're we're catching. Energy, capturing energy that belongs to all of us. 
we're we're taking we're taking sunshine from other people, and there won't be <laughs> there just won't be enough. Don't Spike, you, wait, Spike said uh, they're coming here illegally and using our sun. They took our sunshine. First they took our germs, then they took our sun. <laughs> That's exactly it, Spike. That's why we got to build that wall, like, really high and, you know, over us. <laughs> or over them. Whatever. Yeah. Block with out the sun. With plenty of searchlights powered by coal. Yes. Yes, exactly. So if, if you live in Alabama and you want to set up shop, off-grid shop, so to speak, you have to calculate how much... How much theft dollars you have to kick over to the state to assure that the state doesn't come out with, I guess, I guess we're calling them bludgies now. Is that the thing? I think that's the thing now. It's a, it all started, I guess we're going to blame, I'm going to blame Shane Radler for this. Shane on Liberty, uh, Liberty Under, Under Attack. Attack. And he does the Vanu podcast where he's looking at this guy Rayo and, and how he did this Vano thing, which I'll let Shane explain it to you. You should go find it out. But apparently, I think Ray O called them bludgies. These are the cops, the enforcers. So, so we're calling five them o? bludgies now. Get the yeah five O. They're bludgies now. That's the thing. <laughs> it was a phrase, I guess, in the sixties and seventies, and now it's coming back, kids. We're all about the bludgies. Did oh Jeremy well, I, made a meme recently about that about the bludgies. Oh. I am willing to accept phrases like bludgies from the 60s and 70s just so those damn bell bottoms stay there where they belong. That's the but 70s anyway. and bell bottoms are the bomb. So I'm wearing bell bottoms right now. Do you want me to show you? No. You don't want to see my bell bottoms? No. So I'm going to stop. I'm going to I'm going stop. to try to stop. I'm going to www.stopit.com. <laughs> you know what? I'll send you the uh, I'll send you the webcam link later on. <laughs> then you nope. can join in whenever you want. So nope, it, not it, just nope, but Susanna uh, Rickard nope. So is there another story that you speaking were of cover? No, speaking of nope? How about Nopra? Nopra, so, Nopra twenty twenty. Yeah. Well, Although, I, 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 no, I want, I want, to, go, I want to go back to Alabama. I want to go back to Alabama. Oh, you got well, more actually, Alabama. Actually, 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 I don't want to set foot near Alabama. You, you wouldn't. Um, you wouldn't. But I, I, I want to talk a little bit more about the story. Now, interestingly enough, if if I remember, and it wasn't just in the last administration, but this has been going on for a long time. There's been encouragement to embrace solar, uh, not just not just out of the Obama administration. This is something that's gone on for quite some time. There's been quite some time. inspiration to embrace government uh, subsidies. Tax breaks, funding, all kinds of stuff. Well, well not not just that, but th they they've encouraged embracing alternative en energies and conserving these resources. And yeah, I think it's cool conserving resources and stuff. Uh, you don't have to be a commie to think that it's good not to waste stuff. Yeah, and I'm, to stretch. I, I, I'm pro go green tech. I'm totally yeah. pro green tech. Yeah, so long so long as it works. But what what they're yeah, doing that's, is that's a big so long. So we have we have the double speak and the mixed message of encouraging people to embrace this new technology and to embrace alternative energies and you know save the planet. You know we can save the planet, um, but then when when you actually do it, they're punishing you by giving you a big giant barrier to entry. Well, and the other point. In addition to the giant barrier to entry that you're giving in Alabama, uh, in, in Florida, for instance, I did a story uh, after the hurricanes where you had people that, well, they had solar, uh, but they didn't have their, their house directly connected up to their solar, so they couldn't use their solar. And the reason they couldn't is because it was a state law to be connected directly to your solar. You have to be connected to the grid and then the solar is connected to the grid, and you can use it that way. You cannot directly connect your own solar power to your own home. Gee, I wonder how they got that deal. <clears throat> so the mm. other thing that they do with the green tech stuff, with the solar energy and the wind energy, oh, they're extremely pro-solar. They're extremely pro-wind. But there's a catch. 
what they're really not, for. They're not pro you doing it. They're not pro uh, individual setups. They want to create giant solar farms and giant wind farms. They want to keep, literally in this case, the monopoly of power. <laughs> Yeah. They want to assure that you still have to be dependent on their large-scale centralized system. So when they're talking in solar and they're talking wind power and whatever else, nine times out of ten, what you're going to find right after that is they're going to be talking about some giant collective gathering that all the and homes get their energy from. And by collective gathering, you mean politically connected cronies. Politically corrected cronies. Well, well, really... Connected, not corrected. If, if they were corrected, they wouldn't be cronies. <laughs> well, they, well, no. They would, be earning, they would be earning an honest living. But anyway. Well, well, they're really just the allies. The, the allies. And, and at this point, the, the leaders in the political and the, uh, the corporate, they're, they're all the same family. So it's, it's hard to even tell at this point that they're all allies. They're all kind of one. We, you, you, welcome to America, folks, where the separation of, of market and state is, is not happening. It's, it doesn't exist. The market and the state are one. So we, we, need to, we need to push for that. You know? we, need this, we need another amendment, Lou. I think that if we passed another amendment, that would teach them. That would stop them. We passed another, that uh, Congress shall pass no law establishing a market what do you think <laughs> uh yeah i'm not i'm not really embracing that idea i'm, I'm just not seeing it as you don't think it's going to hold them back no no i i i think amendment is going to restrain government like the constitution has restrained government and I, I think the constitution restrains government much in the same manner that get well cards cure diseases <laughs> hey Every once in a while, somebody gets a get well card and gets well. You can't deny that. I mean, statistically, it's bound to happen. So all you got to do is find that statistical anomaly and point it out and say, boom, proof. That's, that's how the Constitution works, folks, by the way. Yeah. Every once in a while, statistically, things align. And it's, hey, look, it worked. So look at that exception. That's proof of the rule. <laughs> yes, exactly. That's exactly my point. Look at that exception. It's also the rule. And then Spike said, "Okay, fine. Don't get well. Then no balloons for you." That's right. No balloons for you, Spike. So we're gonna go to our first break. I think we're done with this story. I think we beat it in the head, and we are going to take a step in the right direction. But is it really? Is a longer leash really the right direction? Hmm. These are the questions that uh, burden my soul as I try to get to sleep. So on the other side, we're going to get to The Crown is Pleased to Let You Buy Beer on Sunday. So everybody, Yay! yes, celebrate the, the, the magnificence and the uh, benevolence that is The Crown. We'll see you in about one minute. Stay right where you're at. See you in one minute. And make sure that you do everything that the commercials tell you to do. Voluntarily, of course. Otherwise, you're a statist. If you want to think outside the box, sometimes you have to wear outside the box. All of your outside the box threads can be found at agora.threadless.com. Go to agora.threadless.com and find the right outside-the-box threads to fit your outside-the-box head. That's agora.threadless.com. Go to the Agora, unless, of course... You're scared. You are listening to iState.tv Ziz Daily, where we expose the reality of power around you and the opportunity to change that reality to favor individuals and free associations. If you like this podcast, please be sure to go to pay.istate.tv and sign up to be a monthly iStater. And now let's get back to the show. You are listening to Is Daily Thursday with Lou Sander and Paul Gordon, featuring a shorter leash, a longer leash, and finally going off the leash. And now here are your hosts, Lou Sander and Paul Gordon. We have Lou's people joining us today. Hello, Lou's people. 
we were yes talking hi to my break. friends so but no no they're your people they're your people you're like the moses and they're following you into the anarcho desert probably somewhere in somalia right there is a a picture that i saw it's uh it it shows the uh, the the desert around Egypt that uh, Moses and his crew had had gone out and in into the desert for forty years, and it shows think, that the it, sh- it shows the walking time from from Egypt to uh, wherever their final destination was was like six or seven days, something like that. So it's like, you know, why didn't anybody stop and ask for directions? <laughs> they actually got to the promised land pretty quickly. And uh, when they got to the promise, 40 land, years. Nope. Nope. Way before 40 years, maybe in a couple of weeks. I don't know exactly. It wasn't long. Uh, and then uh, Moses sent in some, some scouts to get the lay of the land. And the scouts came back and they're like, dude, there's like these giants and it's like really terrifying. And uh, there was only two people. There was Caleb and, Dude, who was the other one? Um, wow, uh, Joshua, uh, who uh, said, "Hey, dude, it's, we got God. We got nothing to worry about." So, uh, in the Old Testament story, the story goes that God actually punished them. So he said, "Okay, nobody in this generation, other than Caleb." And Joshua are going to live to see the promised land. So that's why they spent 40 years in the desert. There you go. You're welcome. Nice. Did you enjoy that? It's pretty yes, good. I did. What would you say? <laughs> I, know, <laughs> I know. My eyes glossed over when you said something, something. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to play our longer leash bump. And we've got a story for you that I think we're all going to enjoy. And when we hear this story... You know, don't let people tell you that the government is oppressive. How are coercive associations lengthening the leash on their pets? We cover stories of the state, the government, the coercive enterprise, the coercive association, plotting to or succeeding in lengthening the leash on those they presume to rule. And that is my wife that does the voiceover, so there you go. Um... And Lou, you didn't get to hear it, but it did. It, it. I'm paraphrasing. It says, "How is the coercive enterprise lengthening the leash on its pets?" That's the theme of this segment, and we have a story that fits perfectly. I think it fits perfectly into that theme, in in a number of ways. And I'm assuming you read this story, right? You got this down. You did your homework? No, you didn't memorize no. it. All right. No, so, no, 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 no. But I can talk about it. And, and before we go into the story, since we are talking about the longer leash, right. um, I had recently had a little banter back and forth with our friend Ben Stone, the bad Quaker, on Twitter. And he was talking about uh, the the folks that love their Second Amendment and all this other nonsense. And, and my response was that uh, – a, a man who brags about living in the freest country in the world is no different from the dog that brags about having the longest leash, leash in the yard. That's exactly right. And that's the theme of this segment. If you're yes. worshiping and glorying over the longer leash, like you're free. Dude, it doesn't work like that. Yeah, I saw that I'm exchange free-ish. between you and Ben. Oh, by the way, Ben, he I'm, I'm assuming he watched our show last week. Because he did comment about the gloriousness that is your beard on the <laughs> Twitters. Oh, and uh, you know another note. I, I was Go walking ahead. around at work yesterday, I think it was. I, I run into this other guy. He's got a nice bushy beard. And we struck up this conversation. And, and we were we were bearding. Not bonding, but bearding. Well, bearding is bonding, but at a whole other spiritual, uh, epistemological level. I don't know. That doesn't even work in that context. But whatever. It's a deep, deep metaphysical reality that they experience together. Beardness. I can't join you in beardness. It's not that I don't want to join you in beardness. Uh, DNA said, no, you ain't getting this. DNA was like, nope, not giving this to you. Are did you ready? not acquire a beard. Did not. So, a- anyway, the, <laughs> so right. anyway, the Ben, the ben Stoke 
Ben Stone quote is conservatives who love both the second amendment and police remind me of a lesson told by a wise man long ago. A man took a rock and threw it at a dog, striking the dog. The dog was infuriated and barked at the rock. Conservatives don't know who their enemy is. Hashtag police state. Hashtag bludgy state. Because we're doing that now. In <laughs> that, honor of that, Shane Radliff no, and Rayo. No, we're not, because that doesn't ring nice enough. Bludgy. But anyway. It does sound kind of friendly, doesn't it? You're like, you like bludgy, you, you know, right? That's right. Oh, Bodie was noting that during that last bump, that music was Voltrog. That's right. I use I use my music, Voltrog's music, and a couple other things, but... Uh, another comment from Bodie here. Uh, he used the P word to describe they should have just went home. I don't know what the context was there. And then Spike said, Anarcho Sino Walking Sism. I don't know what that means, Spike. He, he also says Anarcho Fenism. Whoa! Ooh, he threw down. He threw down. Yeah, and Bodhi has the link to agora.threadless.com. And Bodhi, you saw the commercial that my daughter made for you. I made a commercial. Well, she, my daughter made the commercial for, for, for Bodhi's. Uh... By the way, oh, I should note. Thanks for reminding me, Bodhi. I am wearing Bodhi right now. And this says, hold on. This says Radical Abolitionist. And this one's kind of faded because I wear this shirt all the time. But it says. Free them all and let liberty sort them out. That's my, that was my answer when everybody was like deciding who's the real anarchist and what's the real anarchy and all this. And my response is uh, free them all and let liberty sort it out. <laughs> we'll find yes. out. We'll find Ooh, out what the good joined. ideas are. What's that? S somebody else joined. Hi, Lisa. Lisa, is this Lisa Delasio? No. Another Lisa. Ne there are Nima Vidati's mom. Who? Nima Vidati's mom. Hi, Nima Who? The, the body's the, the, Who? Oh, my gosh. V Vidati. By I the know, way. I know. It's she my was, mouth. I didn't want to cooperate. She was the driving force of campaign for a longer leash for, for the longest time. And I really miss her work, but but she went and, and got more education and really, uh, really – Took off out the gates, and, and now she's like a, a psychotherapist or something like that. Wow. So you're like a brainiac person now, Lisa. You're too good for us now, right? Uh, Paul's <laughs> background, Don, is a library, by the way. Don Chavis wanted to know what my background is. I sit in a library, and and Lou sits in uh, anarcho-burbia. Anarcho -burbia. That's where you're sitting right now. In, in my studio, yes. Yes, your studio. You, you're working on it. It's a work in progress. You're thinking about getting a green screen, right? Yeah, that, that is something that, that I do need to do. I do okay. need to get a green screen. Oh, and I see, by the way, that John Smith has joined us. John, it's good to see you, buddy. John Smith, man, I used to be able to talk to him all the time, but now he has a jobby job. He's working the lines, working the pipelines, so we never get to talk to him. Miss you, buddy. That's Brother man laying pipe. And, oh, I love a man that lays a nice <laughs> pipe. You know I do. So let's get to this oh, story. Gosh. So this story is, uh, well, I'm just going to read it, and you feel free to interrupt me at any time. Apparently, the crown is pleased, at least in Indiana, to allow you to finally buy and sell alcohol on Sunday. Now, now when I say that, hold on. Slow your roll, kids. We don't want to get crazy here. The bill was introduced in Indiana State Senate and will soon hit the Senate floor. So it hasn't passed yet, but it passed a major hurdle and made it out of committee. So yes, so you still don't have permission. I mean, freedom. No, no, you don't have. Uh, actually, I wrote here January 11th. It's actually yesterday, January 10th. The bill was voted out of the Senate's public policy committee. Boy, say that. Public Policy Committee by a vote of nine to nothing. So what happened here? You think about it, Lou. Not one member of that Senate committee chose to tell the people of Indiana that the Crown was not pleased to have them buy or sell alcohol on Sunday. Come on. Round of applause. 
for those people. I mean, I, wow. I do have to correct you wow. on one thing. Uh, it, it's not the crown anymore. We not, went to oh, we war are the with crown. the crown. We so, are the crown. Yeah. Well, no, no, we're not the crown. We didn't embrace the crown. We we created a republic. Dun, 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 dun. Well, it's still we, the crown. We no 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 metaphorically, we, crea- we created a republic with a with a president that would leave when his time was up, not not a king that would pass it on to his heirs. America, America, like Bush and Bush, <laughs> yeah. And then they tried the third Bush like that, or or Clinton and Clinton, like Clinton and Clinton, <laughs> right? Right. So, so yeah, the but- proper fr- the proper phrase that you should be using is. Excuse me, sir. If it pleases the powdered wig, might I <laughs> oh, buy a pint? Oh, I like on, that. On, on Sunday. Oh, if it. You know what? I'm sorry. I really like if it pleases the crown memes. So I'm sticking with crown. Fight me. If okay. If it pleases it, the powdered wig, <laughs> powdered wig is good. But I'm sticking with crown. Might, Fight me. Might I sell some whiskey on Sunday in <laughs> in the in Pennsylvania? You can actually in in Pennsylvania. And, and not in Indiana. Response, and to which the response is, I y'all best have my twenty five percent whiskey tax. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. As long as I get mine, as long as I get have mine. My money. <laughs> right. Yeah. The, so the, the response from the puttered wing was, "Bitch, better have my money." Bitch, but have my money. You better have my money. <laughs> Homie, don't even play, man. Bitch, best have all my money. Oh. <laughs> uh, Oh, John Smith said, "I lay pipe, I lay pipe miles by day, inches by night." You're not talking inches at night, John. I've heard stories. I don't. I don't even. You. You hope someday to be talking inches at night, but I'll let that go. So the people of Indiana, thank you, nine crown representatives, for choosing to set the potential. Yeah, I'm sticking with the crown thing. What are you going to do about it? Uh, okay. To set the potential for the powdered wig. <laughs> Definitely say, hey, we are now pleased to allow you to buy and sell this certain thing on Sunday. You're welcome. If it pleases the powdered wig, could you please tell Paul to quit saying if it pleases the crown? <laughs> you know, honestly, I you sold me. I really like powdered wig. I'm going to start using that. I'm going to switch from crown to powdered wig. It, it, it does fit better. It really does. So thanks, Powdered Wig. Thanks for giving us hope. And see, this is one of those examples. See? You see, Lou? The system works. You see, Indiana had a fundamental right to be able to buy and sell alcohol on Sunday. And the system corrected itself 200 and some odd years later. But it did. It got to it. Here's here's the question: Why 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 should they not be allowed to purchase alcohol on a Sunday? What was the uh, what was the reasoning behind that? Did the borderline people say, theocracy? Yeah, well, did the did the the people did they or no no because it's, we're all in this together? Did we did get we? together and say it's probably not a good idea for us to buy alcohol on Sunday? Therefore, rather than recognizing that and just not doing it, we demand that our leaders tell us, we demand that our servants tell us that we are not allowed to purchase alcohol on Sunday. We demand that our servants determine what the punishment will be for our disobedience if we, <laughs> if we, if we violate and do the thing that we don't want to do in the first place. Right. We, we, and, and, and did I say we? We, you, you said we. We. We, 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 we. This is something I do in my toilet. <laughs> I think it's fitting that I and I pointed that out. John Smith, by the way, I think John Smith wants to sow dissent between you and I. Maybe John's jealous because I didn't ask him to be the Thursday host. I think that's what it is, John. Because he said, now if we could just y- get you to fry bacon like a normal man. That, that was inappropriate, John. And, and you know that Lou and I, that there is a division between us. I'm right. Lou is wrong. Lou fries his bacon like a commie. I bake my bacon like a free man. 
you know, the the origins of baking bacon uh, this were... This is all lies coming up. Be prepared. No, no, not not lies at all. Fake not news. even close to being a lie. He, he got this I, story from CNN, okay? Go ahead, relay no, your CNN no, story. No, 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 no. You can no, deny no, it. No, no, no. This is, this is wrong, Lou's inner wolf wrong. blitzer coming you're, out. You're fake news. <laughs> wrong, wrong, wrong. Go ahead, Wolf so, Blitzer. Go ahead. So take it anyway, away, Wolf. So anyway, what was happening was o- over in Germany, Hitler and, and, and Goebbels and, and all them were, were uh, talking oh, about how they Oh, you're pulling gonna... my Hitler card. All right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. They're, 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 all right. they're talking about. They're, they're talking about throwing Jews in, 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 into the oven, and <laughs> Hitler says, but what about the bacon? <laughs> we put the bacon in there. So no. you're, actually, you're, actually, you're actually a Nazi, Paul. I, I, it, I know that joke was in bad taste, but... Is, is, are you, if you plan on running for president, this segment alone will prevent that from ever happening. You will never be able to run for president. You're never going to be able to run for public office. Not even dog catcher at this point. You're pretty much done. As a public servant. As a powdered what? wig, you are done. If okay, you had any fine. powdered wig ambitions, <laughs> they have finished on this day. No, Thank I, you, Wolf, No, I though. did not. No, I, I don't want to wear a powdered wig and makeup and and in a dress. You know. Yeah, what's all was with all that tranny stuff back in the colonial days? You know what? I don't even know why you're you're going down that road. I wouldn't question their gender or their lifestyle choices as their business, sir. Why, well, considering that the that the men and women both both wore makeup and wigs, uh, you, basically everything is an assumption of gender back then. But anyway, they, they may have been hiding the stinky, and also the. Uh, the rampant uh, skin diseases. So, so that might have something to do with it. But anyway, I think we're done with this story. I think we're done with this segment. I think it's time for us to prepare our studio audience for the last and the best segment on Is Daily Thursday. And that is, that is we, we've taken you from the shorter leash to the longer leash. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take you off the leash. And the story that we have lined up for you and off the leash is ghost guns are spooks. And don't you forget it, Fed. That's right. <laughs> I just realized my promotions I'm going out says coming up on Is Daily Thursday with Lucander Niz. You're not Lucander Niz. <laughs> That's weird. So. <laughs> I'll correct that. This promotion will just say Lou Sander and Paul Gordon. So when we get back from our quick one-minute break in which you will listen to everything that the commercials tell you to do and follow them voluntarily because of my social contracts, we're going to talk ghost guns. Are you Are you ready to talk ghost guns on the other side here? Sure. Ghost guns it is. What? You haven't subscribed to iState.tv's YouTube channel? Are you insane? Get yourself over to u.iState.tv. That's you as in unique. And subscribe now to get all the latest video updates coming out of iState.tv. And since you're already there, you might as well hit that bell to get immediate notifications as soon as the video goes live. That's u.iState.tv. You as in unique. We'll meet you there at u.iState.tv, where video meets the iState. It's all fear and loathing in the Stadium on State Page land, but that does not need to be the case. What are the stories you're missing that might counter that fear and loathing? You'll find those stories and more at iState.tv, your home for news, views, podcasts, and more that exposes the reality of power and shares opportunities for tilting the balance of power towards individuals and free associations. Go to iState.tv now and be sure to register on the site to get daily updates sent directly to your email. You are listening to Is Daily Thursday with Lou Sander and Paul Gordon, featuring a shorter leash, a longer leash, and finally, going off the leash. And now, here are your hosts, Lou Sander and Paul Gordon. You were singing a song before we left, and they didn't get to hear the song. Do you want to share the song with the studio audience, or are you going to keep it to yourself? Who are you going to call? Ghost Gunner! Ghost Gunner! 
Richard? That's what we're doing. We're doing Ghost Gunner. What do you What do you know about Ghost Guns? Oh, I don't know anything about Ghost Guns because I don't know. I don't even know if they're legal. And I mean, I would theoretically, never have... just theoretically. Not. Oh, I mean, the... it's a given that you don't have Ghost Guns. Nobody does Ghost Guns, and people don't advocate for ghost guns that's well the, that's a the legend the legend if they actually existed would be that there is a uh, cnc machine that would mill an 80 percent ar-15 lower that you could easily finish off uh, as a matter of fact you may even do the finishing on there but anyway it will it will get a lower receiver ready to where all you have to do is drop in the other stuff like the trigger assembly and then have an upper receiver and with, with the barrel and everything else that you could put in there and um, you could probably 3d print some high capacity magazines and ghost gunner 3d printing will probably do more to protect firearm ownership and gun rights than the NRA Second Amendment and, and every political activity and petition combined. Well, there. I think the show's over, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> if my mic Nailed wasn't that. in the stand, I'd, if my mic wasn't in the stand, I'd drop it right now. Well, yeah. Yeah, you don't want to do that, though. Yeah. Yeah, this is, you know, I, I follow 3D printing in general. Uh, if you go to iState.tv, you'll see a lot of stories about 3D printing. Because I think 3D printing in a lot of ways really undermines the coercive enterprise. It undermines the large-scale economic systems that are currently delivering our products and services. Well, the bulk of our products and services. And those large-scale, uh, whatever you want to call them, corporations, uh, they're, they are in bed. They are one with the state. So... 3D printing enables people at a local level to print for, well, it's, it's not quite there yet, but it's getting there. Like every year it's, it's algorithmically improving and it's close to being a reality where you're going to see 3D printers in everybody's homes and they're going to be printing most, uh, you know, when, the, when, when you have a screw that, that you need for your door because your door is broken. You know, you're going to 3D print your screws. You're not going to go out and buy them. And, or, when it, or when a child needs a prosthetic limb because well, that's been done. That's already being done. And they're, yes. they're, they're printing prosthetic limbing, limbs, customized prosthetic limbs for children for like 50 bucks as opposed yeah. to thousands of dollars. Uh, yeah. so and and the and the thing about children is because they grow so quickly they're growing out of these very expensive ones and if you can if you can produce them at a very low cost that makes it a lot easier on on these people it, yeah. that that lowers the cost of doing stuff and and, and just like uh, and, and just like being able to do use your own solar power just like being able to have your own well and septic system rather than using the the, the city water in the in septic all, all this stuff is, is making people self-sufficient and able to take care of themselves with with much less effort to begin with, but, but without having to rely upon everybody else. Without having to rely upon systems that rely upon the coercive enterprise for their protection. Uh, that's the key. The things that I, I believe, and you, you can tell me what you think of this, I believe that the, the two th key aspects of of human living that course of enterprises fear the most is self-reliance and anonymity now the ghost gun touches both of those it enables individuals to equip themselves with effective tools of self-defense in a way that puts them outside the system so the system can't register who actually has these tools and that scares the bejesus out of out of the out of the course of enterprise and that's where my story touches on it it's basically it's 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 analyzing how it is that the the the, the media and I'm going to refer to the media that is part of a corporate system that owes its protection and existence to the state. So you figure out what that makes the media, how they're painting the ghost gun story. And it's, 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 of course, it's, it's, it's from a perspective of fear. 
So what they're going to talk about is how these ghost guns are going to enable these bad terrorists and criminals to to get guns and you won't be able to track who's doing what you know you you ain't gonna be able to solve any crimes because you're not gonna be able to track what gun was used and like criminals are using guns that can be traceable like criminals are not stealing guns so that they don't or throwing to. them away right right <laughs> yeah they're not doing anything an like that I have an idea here, and this this is a reason to promote this. And it's the the the, the way that we're going to get the the mainstream conservative on board because they they're the ones that say my Second Amendment says I have a right to keep and bear arms and it shall not be infringed. And then because they of say the Second Amendment. And and then they and then they say all legal gun owners, all law abiding citizens, law abiding where, citizens, yeah. Yeah, where, where the Second Amendment doesn't say anything about that, but but here's a way, here's a way to get them on board with this. Uh, in the event of a foreign invasion, not that the not that is, I mean, it is logistically impossible for a foreign conventional military to invade and occupy a landmass of this size with this population and cross the oceans. Uh, it, it, nope, it's not going to happen. Not just Big nope, old but. Nope. Not just nope, but nopra. But anyway, no, nopra twenty twenty. <laughs> but 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 here's the thing: they're morons and they don't know this because most of these hardcore uh, troop worshipping conservatives uh, never joined when they had the opportunity. So they're actually keyboard warriors. But anyway, but that's beside by, the point. By, by promoting by promoting a ghost gunner in every home, there should be a ghost gunning machine in every there be. in every pot, and a three D printer in every garage. What's that song by Nima Devadati that he, I think he did with Michael? A, a gun for everyone except the government. There sh he, he needs to redo that, and it needs to be a ghost gun for everyone except for government. But but follow me on this. Follow me on this. And, I'm following. And this is this is where we need the conservatives to get on board, and not just not just the the average idiot that gets pissed off at a politician and then marches around the politician's office waving his flag at him. I'm I'm talking about get the get the politicians on board. Last night on the fiends. I, I, we were talking about uh, about legalization. You of, and Randy, uh, rec yeah, recreational cannabis in California. And my solution, if the federal government starts cracking down on people, is the politicians of California. They need to start talking. They need to start talking about jury nullification in these cases. We need Jerry Brown to do a commercial that says, "Are you sick of good people going to jail for victimless crimes?" Well, he now can't he can do, do something about it. He can't make that commercial. No, no, no. He can't. He, he can't because he has to. <laughs> he has to protect his people of California. He could throw in a disclaimer. No, uh, I meant he can't do that because he has a number of victimless crimes that he'd like to throw people in jail for. Well, he he could throw in a disclaimer telling them not to do that, and, and I'm sure that I'm sure that the people will pay attention. Wink, wink, nod, nod. But anyway, so oh, Jerry, I used to do Jerry, a good Brown, Jerry Brown. Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> I wanted to do a Jerry Brown stop, impersonation. I tried that. to and I couldn't do stop it. That. All right, go so ahead. So we need we need Jerry Brown to promote jury nullification, but only in federal drug cases. Wink, oh, wink, not. Right. Yeah. Only in federal drug and, cases. And, and we we need people like Mitt Romney to talk about how everybody should have a ghost gunner in case the Soviets invade the USA. That way they won't go and they they could go to the police station and, and, and the stores and get all these sales records and find out who who the gun owners are, but that's not going to matter because they can confiscate all the all the legal guns, but they'll never be able to take our ghost gunners. And with that, with the ghost gunner, we will be able to defend against the the Soviet threat, the evil empire. As a matter of fact, if those Muslims come in here and, and they try and take over, this is the Mus conservative narrative. Moose limbs. Muslims, yeah, yeah, like moose legs and arms and stuff like right. that. So anyway, so anyway, <laughs> when, when the Navy of Afghanistan shows up on the shores of Miami, and they're people close, will able, people will be able to take out their ghost guns and or their ghost gunner machines, and they will be able to manufacture these guns so that they can repel these evil Muslims from invading the USA. And and and, and we. We need every politician to support this. Right. Unless unless you don't love America. 
Unless yeah. you're for, you know, unless you, you're for the commies you, you, and the terrorists. Yeah. Do you want the terrorists to win? Do you want the communists to right. win? <laughs> so, right. so you have to support a ghost gunner in every pot and a 3D printer for magazines in every garage. Yes, yes. yes. So Nima Vada, da, va, oh gosh, why can't I say your last name today? Nima, Nima V. V. <laughs> Nima V. There you go. Nima V. The, you you the need Nima to renew v. the song. You need to make it a ghost gun for everyone. You got to do that. I'm going to say a couple uh, closing remarks on this, and then you can follow up if you want. So with the... And this is in part from the article that I wrote, which, by the way, if you go to is daily dot live you can see the archive of all the shows and then on the shows you can then see all the links to all the stories that that we're, we're covering here so with the prolifer proliferation of ghost guns will come the proliferation of triggered gun grabbers and with that triggering will come what we're already seeing more and more news stories that are focused on ghost guns being used in crimes more stories hyping the public to be afraid of ghost guns and through that fear to demand that their masters, the owners and managers of the course of enterprise, do the right thing and pull the leash tighter. Make ghost guns illegal. And never mind that if you make ghost guns illegal, the only people who might actually pay attention to laws that will be difficult to enforce at best are not committing any crimes now and have no plans to commit any crimes in the near future. The criminals, on the other hand, will have no compulsion to suddenly follow a law that prohibits them from buying or making a gun that cannot be traced back to them. And then my last remarks here. The rise of ghost guns is just one more area where technology is enabling individuals to do the two things that controlling state acolytes and their masters don't want to see happen. It's creating self-reliance and it's creating anonymity, the deadly combination that creates free people with real power. This is where the real power emerges. It emerges from people who can, can be anonymous and can be self-reliant, far more effective than voting. Matter of fact, voting is not effective. This is, this is effective. So this is, uh, this is what will undermine the prevailing power, at least for now, of the coercive enterprise over individuals and free associations. You have, you have some last remarks on that. Well, I have to tell you that you, that you really nailed things. Um, this is an example of creative destruction. And this is a, a theory that was created possibly, uh, I'm, I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure that, uh, he, He's the author of this series, but uh, uh, Joseph or Joseph Schumpeter, possibly uh, Joseph. I'm not really sure what his country of origin is, but Joseph Schumpeter uh, came up with the theory of creative destruction. And what this means is new technology comes along and destroys the previous technology. So, as an example, the uh, you look at the eight track. Well, the regular cassette tape came along and it destroyed the eight track, and then the CD came along and destroyed the cassette. And the and the record and the the remaining eight tracks and now you have MP3s which have destroyed the CDs for the most part, and you have all this new technology coming along and it's it's make it's, it's getting rid of the the obsolete technology that that just doesn't cut the mustard anymore. So you have better stuff available to you, and what this creative destruction is doing as far as governance is, uh, well, one it, it's it. Well, government's always been obsolete, but what the what the <laughs> yeah. creative destruction of this is doing is it's rendering it impotent. It's 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 making to it's making it impossible to enforce tyranny, or or at least making it very difficult. Yeah, and I have a whole theory which I'm not going to get into because we're near the end of the show here about the the nature of power, but. Uh, Power is essentially power is the ability to take action and to influence action. And there's four spheres that I've identified: uh, demonstrable, social, ideational, and force. Well, uh, having folks emerge who are self-sustaining, who can turn to an anonymous network, if you will, this is. This is going to create the kind of, well, it's going to actually create real force power for individuals to protect themselves against 
course of enterprise aggression, but it's also going to create a demonstrable influence for people who they just can't let go of, of, of the myth of the rule of law or whatever myth that the course of enterprise that they happen to live in uses to hold on to its power. But if they see people that are thriving in a demonstrable way because they're self-reliant, because they're avoiding paying taxes, uh, they're not being tracked by the government. I'm telling you, these folks, they're not, you're not going to just get ideologues in uh, anarchists that are going to say, hey, that sounds great. People generally want to avoid having their stuff taken from them. And they generally want to believe, or they want to feel secure. And if they see that people are developing their own sense of security and their own reliance in a way that their stuff isn't getting taken from them as much, I guarantee you, you're, you're going to influence far more people through that demonstrable path than you will screeching taxation is theft. Not that, mm -hmm. not that I'm saying you shouldn't screech taxation and stuff i'm just saying why not why not both oh you know, yeah it's absolutely really it's it's really just interesting saying, that, i think the demonstrable that there, will be more effective yeah there are a lot of pro-government taxes taxes are the price we pay to live in civilized society folks from seattle they're going to be going to bellevue tacoma SeaTac, I all, all these different places to buy their sweetened beverages and avoid the tax there are right. a, a number and they're not of, anarchists are, they just yeah want to save money they're, they're, there's a number of people that they're not libertarians, they're not anarchists, but they're emb embracing cryptocurrencies. And there's a lot of people out there that support the police, support the rule of law, but they're going out and they're buying cannabis and, th and they're violating the law. They are individually nullifying governance. And, and although they don't realize what they're doing, they, they're not libertarians or anarchists by any stretch of the imagination, but they sure as hell are acting like it. Yes. And that's my point. You you went right to exactly. You don't have to win people over to the idea that maybe we don't need this course of enterprise. Maybe there's a free association way for human beings to, I'm going to use the word govern. I hope I don't trigger anyone. There's free association ways for human beings to govern each other. To a certain degree, that, that ideational persuasion is going to work. But I'm telling you, the demonstrable persuasion is going to get people to actually start living anarchy not even thinking about it they're not going to be reading louis von mises you know they're louis von louis <laughs> yeah okay whatever L ludwig von mises you're having I'm, all the time i'm, I'm confusing today. louis uh our friend louis who louis fernando our, mises right right exactly i, I mix the two together <laughs> uh but they're, they're not going to be reading von Mises. They're not going to be reading Rothbard. They're just going to be living it. And the more that they live it, the less they're going to want to experience the coercive enterprise model. And they're going to reject it. Not ideationally, just like, dude, this sucks. It's so much better over here. That, that's my point. And that's it. You got anything else? Because we're near the end of the show. Uh, I think we nailed it. Uh, I, think, I, think, I, 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 I guess if I'm going to close with a line, I would have to say, I don't care if they're wearing an anarchy t-shirt and screaming taxation is theft, so long as they're thinking anarchy and, or living anarchy and, and acting like taxation is theft. Yeah. Yeah. What are you doing? I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm doing my things, which I don't necessarily want to share with the rest of the world, but certainly we're all doing our things to try to, as I like to say, disentangle ourselves from the coercive enterprise as, as, as much as we possibly can. Or a better way to put it is uh, th there's a lot of people out there that aren't going to wait for, for freedom to get voted into into reality. They're yeah. just going to do it now. So yeah, that, that's, yes. li live your life so free that your very existence is an act of rebellion. Yes. And that's from Albert uh, Count. Uh, Camus or Camus? Camus, Camus. Yeah, he's a Frenchy, right? So Camus. He's a Frenchy, yeah. So it's Camus. No, it's French, so it's Albert. Because you don't pronounce Albert, anything in French. <laughs> Albert Camus. Well, Albert Camus. Let, let, let's let's give some news you can use for your for your listeners here. Uh, there there are, there are 
a, a small number of letters that are pronounced at the end of French words, C, R, F, and L. Careful. So if it ends in a C, <laughs> Frederic Bastiat, okay. then you would pronounce a C. But uh, if it's like a T, then there's no T. Bastiat. Pronou- or there's, yeah, correct. So Bastiat, yes. I instinctively know because I have some French in me uh, trying to get him out, but he's still there. So we're done with the show. We are – you've been listening to Is Daily – Thursday with Lou Sander. That's right. Lou Sander, not Lou Fien. Although every once in a while I still say Lou Fien because it's going to take a little transition. And myself, Paul Gordon. You can join me tomorrow on my personal Facebook page, Paul Gordon's. And I do have the setting to global so everybody can see it. But you can, you can friend request me. And as long as your page doesn't look totally crazy... I will probably accept your friend request. So you can see the show. uh, Headlines that you may have missed tomorrow at uh, 12.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, which is on every Monday through Friday. And Is Daily will be back Monday on the Liberty Principal Facebook page, probably around 9.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, sometimes a little earlier. My co-host for Monday, uh, uh, Professor Rambo, he usually shows up somewhere between 9 and 9.30, and it's kind of the way he works. That's the best that we could do. So you'll join us for, we'll be talking Full Auto, iWorld, and iPrepper on on the Monday show. I thank you, Mr. Lou Sander, once again, uh, and uh, thank everybody that, uh, that joined us on this show, and especially the commentary. We'll see you on we'll see you on Is Daily Thursday next Thursday at 9 p.m. with Lou Sander and Paul Gordon. I still don't have a good sign off. I'm still working on that. I'm gonna work on it this weekend. I'm gonna get Thanks a good for having off. me. There you go. Thanks for having me. It was a pleasure being had. Oh, it was a pleasure having you, Lou. Oh, it was a pleasure. By the it way, I've pleasure eaten being his had. bacon. I've eaten his bacon, so there's like kind of a religious connection between us now. It's weird. Uh, even though it was fried bacon. Okay, I'm going to say on the record, yes, I prefer baked bacon all the way. But his fried bacon was good. I'll just leave it at that. And we'll see you next Thursday. <laughs>